Dave, there's dappled oh. sunlight on you. Dappled sunlight. <laughs> yes. <Sweet. laughs> you are Sweet. encased in dappled, encased isn't the right word, in dappled sunlight and gross. Enshrined? Enshrined, that's it. <laughs> You're glowing. Are you pregnant? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so anyway, uh, like we were saying, so there's no stumps, too far to the vehicles. It's uh, probably a 12 minute walk just to get to the nearest road access. And uh, no stumps to put a stump vise into, which is how you would normally sharpen your chain. So kind of came up with this little technique here where you put a, a rag over here because of the chain oil will be coming out put the, uh, the holder for your sharpening tools here, protect your uh, chainsaw chaps. These chaps have like a, a mesh on the inside that uh, will get uh, caught up in the chain and foul it at the sprocket and it'll stop it so that uh, you don't cut into your leg. So it's, uh, especially when you start getting tired or you get a little inattentive or you're off balance or something like that, it can happen. So uh, it's, you know, for the, the hundred bucks or whatever for the chaps and a little bit of extra heat and weight uh, can save you a lot of money at the emergency room. That's assuming that you can hop the half mile out to the, <laughs> or the quarter mile out to the road <laughs> before you bleed out. <laughs> well, that's why I, I've got, uh, so I've got my major bleeding first aid, part of my first aid kit. Uh, which has like a clotting sponge and uh, some big trauma dressings and an Israeli dressing uh, and that's in addition to the, uh, the first aid kit that's always in the uh, saw box so it just lives in there and it's you know some, some basic bandages stuff like that and uh, then uh, one Israeli dressing but it's a, it's a big one it's like a six inch so well let's hope the, it, let's hope it stays in its package yeah <laughs> that'd be best so yeah the israeli dressings are kind of like a battle dressing they put uh pressure on the wound as well as uh having a big pad uh so but yeah you, you plan to never have to use them but one of the nice things is they're sealed up in these nice uh heavy duty plastic uh shrink wrap bags. So, so how long do they stay viable inside those bags? Realistically, uh, as long as you don't perforate the bag, probably forever. You know, in spite of whatever the expiration date is, it, you know, in reality, it's probably forever. So. Well, let's hope you never, forever need it. Hopefully not. Anyway, so we're doing the, the sharpening of the chainsaw. So this is kind of the, the method we've come up with here. And uh, seems to work pretty well. How do you know when you are finished? Finished what? Well, you're lifting it up and you're moving the chain through. So how do you know when you get to the where you started? And so uh, two easy ways. One, if you have like a Sharpie or something like that, you can mark one of your teeth. You're theoretically supposed to go and look for your worst tooth and start there and you get that one in shape, you match everything else to that. But uh, uh, in reality, what, what I'm doing here, since I don't have a Sharpie or anything like that, uh, uh, they mark their chains, the different types of chains, by a colored link. So if you see this one here, it's got a green link. So that means it's a low kickback chain. I, did, I, I didn't see it. So right let's. So yeah, I don't know if that's going to show up, but okay. I well, see it. There's green. a green dot there. <laughs> so that's a green uh, little mark there. So you just basically use that as your mark and go all the way around. Makes sense. And then you can check your, uh, your rakers and everything. Uh, usually check them. Just once a day, just to make sure that they don't need to file down. So, if, if you're if you file your your teeth down too much, then uh, your rakers will uh, be too tall, and you have to file them down as well. So, what's a raker? Rakers Not are, one who rakes. Right here. No. <laughs> so, uh, 
Uh, I, I call it a raker because that's what it would be on a on a handsaw. But um, basically, the the difference in height between the raker and the tooth is how much the. Uh, I'm getting a really great shot of your shirt. I'm trying to find <laughs> the. There we are. <laughs> There's your hand. <laughs> So, uh, the difference in height between your raker and your uh, tooth, that's how much each one of these will, will take off when it goes through the wood. So, as you sharpen your teeth, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. As they go back, you can see they're sloped. So, at, at a certain point, you have to start taking down your rakers as well, otherwise you won't take any wood off. I'm learning a lot today. So, the other thing about the chain, they've got these little uh, marks here, so you can tell if you are, you see the little hash mark there, by that, so that tells you uh, the angle that the tooth is supposed to be at, so that's a good visual reference, you make sure that your teeth are, you're sharpening them at the right angle. You've got marks on here as well, got a 10 degree and a 30 degree mark on here. But uh, those are a little difficult to use sometimes. So, have a good sanity check. Make sure you're not doing anything wrong. <laughs>